Hello everyone and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report for the channel and today we are seeing the first showing of the Servants of the Apocalypse led by Nsabanur aka Apocalypse himself. They're very complicated, we'll cover that in a second. And they are going up against Wakanda today with uh, some heavy hitter help thrown in. This video will be available first to channel members so thank you in advance and hello to the channel members who are going to see this a little bit early if you can spare some extra to support the channel you can access to series like this a little bit before everybody else along with some other little perks anyway let's go look at both sides so i did forget to mention the threat value today it is 17 threat and here is the servants of the apocalypse along with apocalypse himself of course he can have up to four horsemen, you don't need to bring all four horsemen if you can't fit them in because you want to bring stronger people, but certain mutants can only be certain horsemen. The PDF showing who is available for free on Atomic Mass, webs, uh, Atomic Mass Games website, there we go. So the Horseman of War is Magic, the Horseman of Death is Iceman, the Horseman of Famine is ironically the Blob, and the Horseman of Pestilence is Toad and that gives them access to each of these horsemen cards which have a passive on them which generates um, masters of the horsemen token or sorry evolution tokens they're called which look like this a couple more about them in a second there's six of them in total and also gives apocalypse access to one of their abilities once per activation uh, i think they're all cost two no the one on death costs three but we can cover those as they happen just to try and not <laughs> have too many rules. They're a very complicated faction. But it gives everyone like a 2 power or a 3 power ability they can spend on. And in general they love handing out status effects because that makes Apocalypse do more stuff. The main card for the Apocalypse, or the Horseman of the Apocalypse, is this one right here. Once per turn during an activation, Apocalypse may use one of the active superpowers on any Horseman card that was assigned to an allied character. When Apocalypse is KO'd, they all disappear. During the power phase, this card gains one evolution token that can hold maximum of six, and as I say, each of their passives do different things to generate um, other evolution tokens on them. Once per turn, when an allied character assigned a horseman's card is attacking, defending, or dodging, they can use up to three evolution tokens to reroll, or an allied character assigned a horseman card can spend evolution tokens as if they were power to play the active superpower on the horseman cards i.e. they could use two evolution tokens to do for instance vanish into dust on the famine card they also have tactics cards of course come over here and see them real quick leapfrog immortal servants that is what that's called right immortal servants journey through limbo the first one and survival and one they're new on the channel and two they're complicated so don't be surprised if things are forgotten about they are a complicated affiliation but hopefully a fun one as well. And relatively simple by comparison, here is the Wakandan faction being led by M'Baku today and bringing along cheap and cheerful Shuri and Okoye. And then at the back there, we have the new version of Black Panther. This is Black Panther Chosen a Bast, I think it's called. And then we also have Namor, the Submariner, who is just, he's a five threat heavy hitter. He is very, very powerful for his threat value. He has an excellent passive that makes him ignore damage reducing abilities people can use so no reduced damage down to a minimum of one he just ignores that does true damage and he's a good just you could sprinkle him in any list and probably get value it seems like so he's here helping out Wakanda to beg for forgiveness for that time he flooded it I guess and we'll see how he does he does have a tactics card he can bring which lets him or the World War II Steve Rogers become a leader of a SHIELD affiliation, but that's obviously not here today. The faction, or rather tactics card they are bringing over here are Wakanda Forever, Spirit of Wakanda, Strength and Cunning, Wisdom of the Ancestors, and Prince's Protection, which is just a generic one Namor has, which is essentially Heroes for Hire, but specifically just for him. And here is the two Crisis cards being played today, with Gamma Waves being the secure, and Alien Ships Crashes Downtown, which is the Kree Power Cores being the Extract, and the latter being the Threat Value. We know Gamma Showers, you get 1 VP for holding yours or the middle, and 2 VP for holding the enemies. But the Alien Ships Crash Downtown, this is very different now to how it used to be, and I don't remember if we've actually played the updated version of this. There's 3 Power Cores now, it's not random, there's 3 set, it's not just 1. You get 1 VP for each you can control, you can only hold one at a time, and during the cleanup phase, you if you have 3 or more power while holding a power core, you roll 3 dice, 
and for each skull and wild, you and all characters within two suffer one damage. So that's a potential three damage <laughs> emitting from someone holding a core if they have too much power when they end their activation. So a, a very different how it used to be. And that gives us the general crosshair setup on the table as it were. So Gamma Shower, Gamma Shower, Gamma Shower. One core in the middle Gamma Shower. One over there. And there's too many cards in the way here but it's hidden just behind there, behind those storage containers. So we'll get the table cleaned up and ready for our play, get both sides deployed and be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So here we are with everything set up. It is Wakanda to the left of your screen and the Servants of Apocalypse to your right and it will be the Servants of Apocalypse taking first activation in the first round. Both sides have five miniatures and you can see where they're set up. Wakanda is basically just in a line in the middle. They're clearly focusing the Gamma Shelters. The Servants of the Apocalypse are a bit more spread out but quite a few of them have larger size bases with the Blob very apart from everybody although that's related to the, uh, the Famine passive. If he ends his activation without anyone within a certain distance, he generates more evolution tokens for the Horseman card. So that could be why he's down there. The rest of them, well, we'll see as we go. Trying to keep track of everything. And in the first power phase, one evolution token goes on the card by default. With that, let's jump into round one and see how this all plays out. So the first activation of the game was the Blob who just moved short twice. Got him within one of the Kree power cores that was over here, he paid his one power to pick it up. Ended his activation, that means the gamma waves are going to hurt him at the end of the round when they sweep across the table. But it also means that his horseman passive for being the hor horseman of famine kicks in. If when he ends his activation there is no non-enemy character within range 3 of him, he puts one evolution token on the master of the horseman card, so there's now two on there. First up for Wakanda was the new version of Black Panther. If you're curious what's different about this Black Panther, he's a 3 threat. He only does mystic damage with his two attacks, his spender and his builder. He has pounce like a different version of Black Panther has. His other main thing is when he's interacting with objectives, he can pay one power to reroll all results, including skulls. So that's kind of like his big twist. He's really good at interacting with objectives. Not super important here, but just in general. And he has that larger size base and he's a medium move. So he moved a full medium move, then he moved like a half move, slotted himself in between the barrels and the stand there and paid one power to pick up the power cord that was right there. The Horseman of Pestilence aka Toad activated and moved where you can see him after not even a whole move I think just to secure the closest Gamma Shelter for the Servants of the Apocalypse. We'll cover each Horseman's kind of passives now as they activate so we don't need to keep mentioning them. Being the Horseman of Pestilence he loves giving out status effects but it's within two. He can either give out certain status effects or hurt those who already have them and at the end of his activation he generates evolution tokens based on the number of enemies around him with status effects. So he's not doing any of that for now but it might happen later on. Umbaku activated for Wakanda and has moved up to stake his claim on the central Gamma Shelter. Staying just within one of it he paid his one power and has picked up the power core so that's all three picked up now two of them in Wakanda's possession and one in the Servants of the Apocalypse. So now it is going to become that scrum that Gamma Shelters often does and that's where the fun begins. The Horsemen of War Magic Activated had to move up twice to get to that central Gamma Shelter to contest it against M'Baku. As the Horsemen of War, the first time per turn she hurts someone or is hurt by someone, that generates evolution tokens so neither apply here yet. Well that's what Shuri was waiting for to use those range 5 panther gauntlets. She moved so that she's securing the back gamma shower for Wakanda. Within range 5 of magic she fired those panther gauntlets at her. Uh, whether they would do more than one damage or not, they do one damage maximum. She managed that and also more importantly did that push for size 3 or less. So magic has been pushed away from the central gamma shower there. She is within one now actually of the back one so she's helping secure that. She's not going to take damage at the end of the turn but she was damaged by the Panther Gauntlets, so that does generate one ev evolution token for taking damage as the Horseman of War. Iceman activated for the Servants of the Apocalypse. He is the Horseman of Death, although I think Archangel would have been a better choice, but he's not done yet. So Iceman it is, and double moved into the center again to compete against Mbaku there. As the Horseman of Death, it, the first time per turn, is it? Yes, it is per turn. He would daze or KO someone, or is dazed or KO'd himself. It puts three evolution tokens 
on the horseman card so he can generate a lot even if he just fails and gets dazed but right now unable to attack because you know round one movement stuff Namor decided it was time to move into action he is just really good at everything he's got that larger size base he's a long move which got him where you can see him his basic builder attack is six dice physical with an advanced medium before damage is dealt I think it is pretty ridiculous movement so he attacked into Iceman and Iceman actually did really well with his defense roll only took one damage all said and done and also because he ended his activation within two of Iceman he has received the slow is that the symbol for slow isn't that stun we might change that <laughs> the new symbols are a little confusing when it was just the web it was kind of obvious before Last activation in round one for the Servants of the Apocalypse was the man himself in Saba Nur. He moves medium on that really large base size, that's Hulk base size. Got him where he was there and then he did his basic attack which is range three, seven dice and he gets to choose what element it is, so physical, energy or mystic. So he can just choose whatever the person he's attacking is weakest against. And on wilds it does cower before me which is you choose either shock or root I believe it is and if the target already has one of those you can push them away or throw I can't remember if it's a push or a throw but either way it's a very scary basic attack he did it into Namor and managed to do two damage to Namor including a wild so he has given Namor the shock condition to go with that lovely lovely slow now you might be wondering why didn't he try and help secure the middle gamma shower to uh, stop that being capped by Wakanda well he is because with the power he generated from doing that damage because it just generates power equal to damage dealt as most builders do he is taking advantage of being allowed to do one horseman power per turn and he spent that two power on vanish into dust which is the power on the famine card you first choose an enemy within two and deal them one damage there is no enemy within two but that's fine it moves on to the second part which is you get placed within two and you can do it once per turn and there's no downside you don't drop objectives or anything like that not that he's holding any but he's obviously just going to be you know somewhere there to contest the central gamma shower there was a lot to cover there so i did forget to mention one that is the symbol for slow that they use now it's you would think it's stun just based on the big s but no it's not, it is slow and the other thing to mention is on his healthy side Namor has 7 health so he's not really feeling that damage yet. And all that was left for round 1 for Wakanda was Akoi who is simply just holding their closest gamma shower. That's going to let Shuri get up there and push people in annoying ways <laughs> if Akoi is the one back capping so she's just going to sit there. Not exactly a bombastic end to the round but that does mean we can go to scoring. It also means that everybody who is holding a power core is safe from the, the rolls because no one has three or more power so we can skip that step and just focus on the victory points. So at the end of round one Wakanda has two of the power cores for two victory points in total. They hold their own gamma shelter at the back there for a third victory point and the middle is contested. Namor and Mbaku versus Apocalypse and Iceman so nobody gets that one. So they have three. The servants of the Apocalypse have the other power core and they have their back closest gamma shelter so they got two. So as we're going to round two, Wakanda is ahead by one whole victory point, three playing two, high stakes, high scoring round clearly, and it is still the Servants of the Apocalypse going first, and it's Gamma Shower, so it's going to be a big brawl. Oh, on that note, of course, anyone not within two of a Gamma Shower has taken one damage from the Gamma Waves, so the Blob has taken one damage, and Black Panther has taken one damage as well. I think that covers everything. There'll be a fourth evolution token going on the Horseman card as we go to the next power phase. And with that, into round two. Round two got started with the big man Apocalypse himself activating for his affiliation. And he is scary. Uh, so, what did he do? Well, first of all, he made use of his. He's allowed to use one of the superpowers on a horseman card. So, he paid two power and did Consuming Blight from the Horseman of Pestilence, aka Toad. He picks every enemy within two of him, which in this case was M'Baku and Namor. You can either give them Poison, Slow or Roots, or if they have one of those conditions, you can give them one damage. He gave M'Baku Poison, and because Namor had Slow already, he opted to do the one damage. With hindsight, that was not needed. Then he did his basic attack again that we discussed last activation he had into M'Baku. Did a casual five damage with that, because M'Baku has two energy defense, and he can pick what element it is. So against characters who have a very, very bad weakness to one of the three, He's really good against them. So Mbaku's alive though on 2 health. Then he did his spender on Namor for his other actual action which is called In Sabanur's Judgment I believe. 
it's eight dice by default, I think, but it adds two dice per status effect on the target, and Namor had slow and shock. So he was rolling like 12 dice against him and did seven damage, which would have got him to dazed instantly from full health. So all this will be disappearing because Namor is not getting an activation this round. That is scarily powerful. Well, the Jabari Chieftain can hit pretty good too if he's got a lot of power to play with. So Mbaku activated and he, well, sorry, first of all, Spirit of Wakanda was used. It was Shuri who paid the two power to use it, so you pick one of these effects to affect every Wakandan character within two of her. So it was just for Mbaku and he healed for two to try and keep him on his feet a bit longer. Maybe not the best use of the card, but hey, that's how it's been used. Then he did his Wrath of the Jabari, I think it is, his Spender, into Iceman, managed to do two damage to him. Including a throw though, chucked him into the Insubinur statue here for one additional damage. It would also destroy the statue because they're classes size one. And then he did, oh sorry, as part of that because he got a wild and a hit, he is allowed to move and then do his basic attack for free. He did that into Apocalypse and did one damage, so this is where we get to discuss Apocalypse's passive. After he has received damage, he heals one. So that goes away, which means he still gets the power as well. Then, however, he did another what is it called his basic weapon it begins with a k his stick <laughs> stick but with a k he did that as his other actual action losing a die because of the um shock but still managed to do well with it and did three damage into apocalypse that will come down to two again because he's received damage he heals one i don't think it's once per turn that that kicks in if it is then he's taking the full three but either way did a little bit of damage there before inevitably going down and he in Dumbaku is holding one of the power cores. So we're still kind of at this angle because Iceman activated. He had to move back after being thrown but then he did some nasty stuff. He used three of the evolution tokens on the horseman card in order to use his death active ability which is called created to end or created to an end. It just means that for the next attack he does you add dice equal to how much damage the target has, up to a maximum of three. So then he just did his basic beam three, which is normally just four dice, but in Dumbaku that made it seven, and it hit Black Panther as well, bringing that to five dice. And he did really well. He did four damage in Dumbaku, which was enough to daze him, took him to dazed. And he managed to do a ridiculous three damage to T'Challa, didn't daze him, even with the one damage you had on him already, but it certainly hurt him. And Baku dropped the power core he was holding. It's been placed within two. It's been placed back there. He did not pick it up. And do we have anything else to cover off the back of that? Uh, yes, it applies a slow on a wild, so T'Challa has slow. And his passive kicks in because he dazed someone. So there's three evolution tokens he just spent, immediately got repaid for getting those uh, that daze. But... The price of his success is being fully felt here. This this could be a very stupid thing, but it's going to be pretty cool. The first one is being played at the end of his activation. So uh, this is an interesting card, this is. So Apocalypse can spend four to play this card. Choose an allied character. The allied character is KO'd, aka killed. Remove one activated token from Apocalypse. If the chosen character was injured, Apocalypse gains stagger, so you'd only get one action. He is killing Iceman but he's got more than enough power thanks to the ridiculous turn he had so Iceman is out of there and that is also out of there and Apocalypse can reactivate this round to just absolutely wreak havoc and that is a pretty scary prospect I think that also means the passive kicks in again because it depends if each criteria is separate on the death card the daze or KO someone and then also if he is dazed or KO'd we'll have to check that for the Horseman of Death, it is an or, so either an either or, either you daze or KO an enemy or you yourself do, so it doesn't proc twice, but that still means he gets back the three evolution tokens he spent, so the Horseman card still has four on it at this point. So Wakanda's a little thin on activations, and Shuri decided to activate, however, did spot an error in round one. When she pushed back the blob, nothing can push back the blob. He should not have been pushed back. He still would have not been within safety of the gamma shower so the damage still would have happened but he should be small forwards from where he is because he would not have been pushed back by Shuri. So with that in mind Shuri decided to body block by going where you can see her and then magic was within range 5 
So she decided to attack her with the Panther Gauntlets, did one damage and pushed her back small. So magic is all the way back there. That's all she could do really. Bad stuff is coming when Apocalypse inevitably activates again, but what can you do? This is a, a massacre. So for the second time this round, Apocalypse is activated. Was it worth killing Iceman to do it? Well, it's setting him up for something beautiful turn three, I suppose. So he activated, he moved past the unconscious enemies right roughly there in order to just do a basic attack into T'Challa. Only did one damage, but that was enough. T'Challa had one health left after Iceman's move. So he is dazed. He dropped the power core he was holding. Apocalypse paid that one power he earned from the damage he did to pick it up. He then spent the last two power he had to do the Horseman Famine ability, Vanish into Dust. You pick an enemy within two. I thought it was they take one damage. It is not. You drain one power. So Shuri has had one power drained from her. Then you do the place within two, which got Apocalypse into danger close right next to Koi. And more importantly, contesting the furthest Gamma Shower. So setting him up to earn even more points next round. Does mean he's abandoned the middle, so Shuri is actually currently holding it. But numbers are not in their favour now, especially thanks to T'Challa getting dazed. And there is still one of the cores sitting that M'Baku dropped that no one's picked up yet. Although Toad obviously can right from where he is. With only Akoi left, she has a couple of passes she can use, so she did so. Uh, Toad activated for the Servants of the Apocalypse. He can interact within range 2 for extracts. He paid one power, picked up the core that was there, and then has just moved back to do what a 2 threat should do, which is just sit on a backfield objective and score two victory points a turn. Another pass was used, so Magic activated. She just moved twice to get back to securing the central Gamma Shelter, but then paid three for Journey Through Limbo. Oh, by the way, when Shuri wounded her, that meant that her Horseman passive kicked in, so one evolution token got put on the card. Anyway, this is picking a character, so friendly or enemy, within two, place them within three, and set them on fire with the incinerate status effect. She picked Shuri, and has teleported Shuri behind the blob here, down here with Incinerate now, and that means that only Magic is currently holding the central shelter. So now Koi has to activate, and then it'll be passed back over to Blob, which means the Servants of the Apocalypse have given up first activation in round three, and that'll be Wakanda's chance to try and do something. <laughs> well, what can Koi do except her best? She did two of her basic attacks into Apocalypse. First one was fully blocked. Second one did two damage, one of which he heals, but that is still one damage added to him, so he's on three. Uh, which means he has four health left on his healthy side. And it's now over to the Blob to take us to the end of the round. So what did the Blob end up doing? Well, he has made it, so I think the Servants of the Apocalypse have done a clean sweep in this round. He moved here to help secure the middle, but then he paid two Evolution to tokens. I keep on going between Evolution and Evolution. I bet that's annoying someone. Anyway, spent two of them to do Vanish Into Dust since he is the Horseman of Famine. No power to drain because everyone's dazed around him as an enemy. Place within two though, got him within one of the furthest Gamma Shelter and close enough to just throw a punch as his other actual action into Koi's face. Almost dazed her, didn't quite, and did three damage to her. But does mean two healthy enemies are now securing that Gamma Shelter. So yeah, I think they got all the points, but let's quickly go to the end phase and see. And yep, at the end of round two, it is the nightmare scenario that I don't think has ever happened in 120 or whatever we're at for these uh, battle reports, but every single available point has been scored by the Servants of the Apocalypse. They have all three power cores. There was some consequences to that we'll cover in a second for three victory points, and they hold all three Gamma Showers, so one VP, one VP, two VP, meaning they went up to nine, and Wakanda didn't move off of three. So nine playing three, we go into round three with Wakanda going first. Uh, obviously, Namor has a bunch of power. Mbaku burned most of his before getting dazed, but T'Challa's got some to play with as well. So they might make a bit of a comeback. But, last thing to cover, Blob is the only one holding a power core who had more than three power on himself at the end of the round. And he rolled a wild, so that is one damage to him and everyone within two of him. So it's also not an attack, so Apocalypse can't overwrite it. So Apocalypse has taken one damage, Blob has taken one damage, Akoi has taken one damage, so she's dazed, but because that happened before full cleanup, I believe she flips her card and will now actually be on her flip side as we go into round three, which might be a plus, question mark. 
this is uh, it's it's going to be hard for them to come back, but at least they have a chance at the top of round three. And the servants of the apocalypse are down a person before them now, by their own volition. So Namor got round three started with ten power sitting, so he immediately spent on his spender, which is called Armies of the Deep. It has a f three different things you can pick: whether or not an octopus, crabs, or turtles helps you. None of them were particularly relevant. He just wanted to roll the maximum number of possible dice into magic, which was seven physical. Magic took a casual six from that, only needed four, so she is dazed. She wasn't holding any of the power cores though, but will not be getting an activation. He then spent three on Imperious Rex. It is basically a charge. He moves his speed, which is long, and that got him back here because he wants to try and defend the home gamma shelter. Oh, on that note, totally forgot to mention that the recap of the last round, sure he took one damage from not being near a gamma shower. She's still conscious though. Anyway, then you're allowed to do a trident attack as part of that action because Imperius Rex is an action. He went into Apocalypse because Apocalypse needed three to daze and unfortunately did two, which he then heals one of because he lived. He actually can pick not to heal one and instead get one power. He's picking the heal, obviously. So he is alive on two, which means he's probably about to activate and wreak absolute havoc. Oh, sorry, I actually miscounted how much health Apocalypse had. He's up to five damage now after that damage uh, being healed there. So he has two health left at this point. Man, Apocalypse has no chill. You need a Hulk to punch him around or something. So he activated, he didn't move at all. He spent two of his, sorry, three of his power on Immortal Servants, first of all, which is either inactive or reactive, but he was picking the active in this case. He and allies within two of him heal two damage. So he's back to only three damage on himself, so he has four health, and the blob has healed the only damage he had on him. He had two power left after that. He activated the War, Horseman of War ability, and that just means for the next attack he does, for every wild or crit, you can change another die result to hit. And he did seven dice into Namor, and managed to do three damage to him and got one wild, you know, he had two wilds, sorry. So he inflicted shock and then rather than try and go all in on Namor, decided to remove an activation and did seven dice into a Koi and also tried to bait out the use of the protection card from Namor. Didn't do it. Did do four damage to a Koi though, so whoop! She is out of there. And the Blob and Apocalypse are still healthy, Namor is not. So they are not holding that back objective, or sorry, they are rather, and he is not. Nor can anyone really help him, because Shuri is the only one they have who is healthy. So, yeah. So T'Challa, Black Panther, Chosen of Best, activated, moved to secure the central one at the very least since Magic is unconscious. Spent three on Wisdom of the Ancestors, which either he or Shuri can play. It means that this round when attacking, defending or dodging, Skulls count as successes. Good job he did that, because then he did his basic 5 dice mystic into Apocalypse, it's range 2, he positioned himself such that that is exactly range 2. And had he not done Wisdom of the Ancestors, it would have had 0 successes. There was 3 block, uh, sorry, three blanks and 2 skulls. Now, the 2 skulls he did get, which counted as successes as a result of that tactics card, didn't add up to a hill of beans, is that the expression? An anthill of beans? I don't know, this is why I don't do metaphors or similes. Either way, Apocalypse fully blocked the damage, so he did nothing except move and secure that middle Gamma Shower. So, not exactly the bombastic turn um, that you'd think, given that he had quite a bit of power to play with. I think he had eight, seven or eight to play with. But, I, I think, <laughs> I, I don't really see a way out for them. I will, we'll certainly play to the end of the round at least, but if this is another round of the horsemen or the you know the servants of the apocalypse scoring like the maximum number of points again there's no coming back well the blob activated and spent three on thunderous splash he did it on black panther you get placed within one of it he placed himself here to be obstructive to shuri trying to come back to help claim the gamma shelter and it's seven dice physical and this is the first roll of the game where it felt like the dice had finally chosen a side because every single one of them was a success including one crit and Every defense die for Black Panther was a blank. Actually, does he count blanks as successes? I don't, I don't think this one does. I think it's, it's the other one. Well, either way, even if it did, that still would not make enough of a difference based on how much damage it did, I think, because it did 
7 damage. So, goodbye, new Black Panther. Thanks for stopping. The Blob technically has one action left, since that was a place within one as part of Thunderous Splash, but he pushes anyone within two of him away small, and those pushed suffer one damage. It's not optional if he gets a wild. So M'Baku has been pushed back, took one damage, now puts him out of range though to be attacked, and he wants to stay there to try and obstruct Shuri, so he's just wasting his other action and doing nothing with it. Yep, this version of Black Panther does not have the blanks count of successes, unfortunately, so he is dead. Anywho, M'Baku activated, he moved where you can see him, then spent 4 on Wrath of the Jabari because it has a size 4 or less throw, and Apocalypse is size 4. So, before damage is dealt, he was chucked medium into the car, one damage from that. He also destroys the car, because the car counts as size 3. Then, the actual damage, 8 dice physical, he was looking for good damage, he could have dazed Apocalypse. He did 2. So that means he has 2 health left, although he actually has 1 more than that, because 1 damage is then being healed. But, he is not contesting the shower, so the Wakandans are actually going to get it. That leaves Toad as the final activation for the Horsemen of the Apocalypse in round 3, and sure he's going next, so it's almost certain that he's going to get pushed and he can't really do anything about it. He moved a little bit to position himself such that the push isn't going to be too bad. It does mean he's not going to be able to hold this, probably, and Shuri probably won't either, but that still does deny a point even if it doesn't gain Wakanda anything, so it's still worth doing, most likely, since she can't push the blob anyway, so we'll be back after that. And sure enough, that is precisely what happened. She moved up medium, she used her panther gauntlets and booped him back small. It does mean that neither of them are within range 2 of a gamma shelter, I think, and no one is securing it, but we can cover that when we go over the points in a second. At the end of round 3, both Apocalypse and Toad are sitting on at least 3 power, so they had to check to see whether they exploded multiple times, and they didn't. They needed to roll, what was it, Skulls and Crits? Or Skulls and Wilds, sorry. And they got none of them. That could have actually dazed Apocalypse, so... Did not happen. But Wakanda actually did deny them the win, because if the... Gamma Shelter back here and that Gamma Shelter were... Still under the Apocalypse control, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse control, they would have won. They would have had 16 points on the dot. Such as it is, though, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse have gained 3 from owning all the Power Cores, and they gained one from holding the central gamma shower with the blob. So that takes them to tw uh, 13, sorry, 13. The Wakandans hold their home gamma shower, and that's it. They gained one, taking them to four. So they're not going to win. <laughs> this one will certainly be the last round. I can't see them coming back, really. But they did buy themselves a little bit of time to maybe miraculously do something if the dice are suddenly on their side. Toad and Shuri are taking one damage. Actually, Apocalypse might as well, depending on how far he is. We'll have to measure that. Still not enough to daze him, but he'll be super close. But the Horsemen of the Apocalypse also have first activation as we go into round four. Huh. Well, to get round four started, Apocalypse activated. Spent two on Vanish into Dust from the Famine Horseman card. Placed within two, got him there. He then spent a total of six power across two different In Sabanur's Judgment which is 8 dice energy and you have to add 2 dice for every stats effect the target has. Did it into Namor first so he couldn't use the bodyguard. Did 4 to him, removed Namor. Did it into M'Baku who has 2 energy defense so even though he didn't have a stats effect it was still 8 dice against 2 dice. Did 5 and he had 1 damage on him I forget from where, didn't matter. Boom, dead, gone. Destroyed, evaporated, turned to dust, and vanished into dust indeed. So, yeah, that's that's probably it, given that Shuri is the last one on the table. But hey, let's give her the chance to do something before she gets murdered, I guess. Well, she did manage to do something. She moved up to claim the furthest Gamma Shower, which would give her two. If it's that case at the end of the round, it won't be, but hey. Then she did Sonic Crush, which is her big spender. Spent four for it, I think. Into Toad did 3 to him, that is enough that he is dazed. She doesn't have enough power left to pick up the power core he had, so it's just being dropped such that it's going to be hard for anyone to pick it up. And now we'll see if she gets removed from the table. Although I know she can't actually because she's not on her dazed site, but she is going to get dazed. And that, as they say, is that. Magic activated, spent 2 to Limbo Step within 2 of herself, which placed her right here. Then she spent on her... Big Spender, Dark Child, I can't remember if it's 3 or 4 power. 
either way that did four damage she already had two on her just from being out of the gamma showers so that is shuri dazed which more or less ends the round since no one needs to move technically i know the blob wouldn't be able to get over there so that power core is just going to sit but that doesn't matter it's essentially a tabling so we're just going straight to the end phase so at the end of a very very short round four wakanda gained nothing the servants of the apocalypse have two of the three power cores those two victory points would take them to 15 of the 16 required to win but they have all three gamma showers which in total is four victory points so that would take them to 19 and gives them a ridiculously easy secure victory wow so that was the first showing of the servants of the apocalypse brought iceman back because even in getting murderized his sacrifices let apocalypse do so much by giving him two activations in one round instead of the normal one. Hopefully everything was more or less done correctly. In terms of keeping track of the evolution tokens, they weren't used as much as I thought they would, because Apocalypse can't use them to spend abilities, only Horsemen can, I think. Yeah, horse uh, Apocalypse can use one of the superpowers on any Horseman card that was assigned to an allied character, but it only says an allied character assigned a Horseman card can spend evolution tokens, yep. So it's just so that the horseman can do the horseman abilities using the tokens for free, essentially, rather than power. So Apocalypse doesn't get that benefit, but him having access to all those active abilities, if he's willing to spend the power on them, is pretty scary. He's not super tough. It is interesting that he takes damage then can heal one, because that does mean he's a bit easier to take down than someone with healing factor or true damage reduction, unless you're using Namor. But he almost went down twice. On his flip side, he becomes immune to every status effect. I know that much. I remember that. Yep. And he actually does gain health. He goes up to 8 health. So, it's not like he suddenly becomes a pushover when he flips over. He's actually stronger. <laughs> More health and immune to every status condition. Which also would mean immune to stun, immune to stagger. So yeah, he becomes dangerous on his other side. The In Sabiner's Judgment. Only being 3 power to use. 8 dice base. And 2 extra per status effect with no cap is insane <laughs> especially if you team them up like with a bunch of people who can do status effects Iceman anyone stops within two of them there's a status effect for you uh, I think Blob can give out stun or stagger and I'm sure there's some other ones here as well and he himself obviously just if he rolls a wild on seven dice he can give one of three different status effects just from his builder attack and you've got the Pestilence Horseman power, which you can use to give it status effects from both Apocalypse and whoever happens to be the Horseman of Pestilence. So that makes Unsubinur's Judgment probably one of the best attacks in the game with how much you can stack up. Obviously we were playing 17 threat here, if you were playing higher threat you wouldn't need to bring just three threat characters and also Toad. You could look for more characters who give it status effects like um, I think Sabretooth and Wolverine are applicable to one or the other horsemen, that would give you a, a good source of con fairly consistent bleed as another status effect. Uh, I, I can't think who else. There, there's so, a lot of options for every horseman, but you want the ones that do any status effect. It doesn't even matter what status effect. Just status effects, because then he will just absolutely wreck face. It wasn't even that the dice felt particularly on their side, except that one roll where, um, I've forgotten now, when Black Panther got murdered. That was the only role where it felt like the dice were super against them. The rest of the time it was just sheer number of dice that was doing it and just the, the extra abilities they were getting to do. So yeah, scary, scary faction. Hopefully done largely correct, apologies if it was not. There was rerolls happening for um, Mbaku's leadership. Uh, I don't think the other part of his leadership ever came up, which was the you can't be pushed off an objective, you can get thrown but not pushed. Oh, actually, Mbaku should have checked for that when Blob pushed him here. But <laughs> getting pushed is actually what kept him alive because Blob then burned an action doing nothing because he would have actually just attacked Mbaku. So, I'd, yeah, it would have worked out potentially worse if that had been remembered, so never mind. Anyway, yeah, complicated faction to use, very powerful. I think you've got to just get Apocalypse down as soon as possible. Like, just really gun for him. Um, Namor didn't really get the opportunity, unfortunately. He, he wasn't as big a, a matchup as I thought. You, you're going to need a Hulk, an Immortal Hulk or something, just 
they can go toe to toe with them, or someone who's immune to a lot of status effects as well. I think that'd probably do pretty good. Or can cure them. Um, maybe like Midnight Suns, or. Oh, I don't know. It's tough. He's strong. But he is Apocalypse, so you'd, you'd presume so. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to show your support by leaving a like, comment, or subscribing, and ringing the bell for notifications. Or if you can spare it to go above and beyond, consider becoming a channel member. You get access to certain videos early, including this video. And it helps keep the channel going. Or you can check out the channel sponsor and pick up something for yourself. I get my uh, my apocalypse. Well, that's true, but I meant my crisis protocol models from them. So check them out if you do so via the affiliate link. I get compensated. Clearly been talking way too much. This felt longer than it was because of the massacre, I think. So either way... Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Ta-ta for now.